<laughs> we'll be doing this in here in a bit. I'll say hello, Josh. <laughs> there's Tom. Let me help him up here. And there's Tomato. Oh, hello. Oh, we're on the. Oh, I see. It's like a virtual stage. Oh, I see. Ah, wow. You get used to these. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, oh. Well, Andrew, I know that guy. <laughs> oh, I know He's Tom cool. Ghost and Tom <laughs> Ham. Hello, Toms. Hello. 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 Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> All right. If you guys are ready, I will hit the go live for you. Go live. All right. We're going live in three, two, one, and you guys are good to go. Stage all the work on stage is all yours. Okay. Um, welcome everyone to the Sonic Radio Specials Q and A. <laughs> I'm your host Leah, and i and my amazing co-host here, Sonic Boone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. <laughs> and we also have, and for those in <laughs> for who's in charge here is Andrew HBA. <laughs> then we, all, we have Tom Ham 94. Hello. Then we have Tomato Ghost or Ghost. <laughs> Hello there. And of course, Sydney Page. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Andrew, can you can you explain what Sonic Radio Specials is about? So in case for audience who do not know about Sonic Radio Specials. Yes, I can. So the Sonic Radio Specials are basically, obviously, Sonic the Hedgehog themed specials that uh, air at the radio station Radio Harrow. And they contain talk topics, uh, songs from the Sonic series, um, quizzes, and of course, audio drama episodes uh, voiced by many of us like Revocast and all sorts of voice actors providing the voices of Sonic, Tails, and all sorts. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, it's uh, they're very amazing. I've listened to all of them to <laughs> to be um to be able to um do this Q and A with you guys. <laughs> Hey. Thank you. Thanks for taking a listen. <laughs> of course. So um, tell us how the Sonic Radio special started. Oh, how they started. Um, so, so there's a show called the Thursday Harrow Today. Um, we used to do like sometimes specials based on things. We did a Shrek special once. Um, and we decided, I, I decided because the Sonic movie 2 was coming, I was like, let's do a Sonic special. And it started with like, this idea of just us talking about the Sonic movie. And then I thought, let's have these little bonus bits with Sonic and Tails. And that's when I, when I got in touch with uh, Sydney here to provide the voice of Tails. And um, it kind of just took, took off from there, really. It did so well. Um, it was kind of like very professionally produced that a spin-off sequel, as you would say, was um, Green Lit. And uh, Sonic Special 2 happened. And I kind of like pushed more of the audio drama scenes. Um, they were like really well received. It was celebrating Sonic's anniversary. And then the third one happened and that's what kind of changed everything. Um, Cause I actually had like a storyline with Sonic and Tails going on an adventure to get the songs back in cyberspace, um, rescuing their friends. And um, yeah, that's how it all started really. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's so interesting. Um, Boone, do you have a question for them? Yes, I do. Is my audio okay? Yes, your audio is okay. okay. Awesome. Um, so, um, what's your process like when creating the specials? Uh, the process. So, um, it starts off with me getting the script done first um, to make sure the story is going to work, the characters will work. Um, and then I, my brother here, uh, Tom Ham94, he um, works on the quizzes. I give him the job to say, give me a quiz and, uh, you know, test me in the whole knowledge of stuff, Sonic things. And then, <laughs> And then I get everyone else to start voicing the characters, really. That's how the process goes. And then once they give me their lines, I put it all together. I do the, you know, cuts. Some scenes have to be cut. Some scenes stay. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very long process. I go to bed, like, at five in the morning. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Make sure you the yeah, yeah. I, I, my body eventually catches up with sleep, eventually. But it's, it's, 
it's all worth it in the end because when you hear the final product, it's um, very interesting. I mean, yeah. And what, what would you guys think, Tom? Which to- uh, ghost, Tom? What do you think? <laughs> I was just thinking that just sounds like the typical artist process of staying up to the early hours. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there. I've done that, and I relate. Yes, uh, I concur. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get it done, you know, no matter how long it takes. It is very fun from the voice acting standpoint, because as you were saying, sort of in the green room before that, you have this like list of actors. You're like, hmm, let's just contact them and drag them in. (laughs) (laughs) It's super fun. Like I know like Andrew, how like send me parts of the script. Like, hey, take the look over this. And then, um, so then we'll, we'll look it over and then I'll send him back some notes and then, and it's time to record. Um, it's it's just cool to hear to, to be a part of the process. I'll record mm. with him, and then and then Andrew was like, "Yeah, I was up till five again, <laughs> right before release, <laughs> just trying to get it done before the release date." Um, but no, there's so much heart and work put into these projects. Mm. And also, my um, my friend RQ, who um, most will know for the Sonic IDW comics, he. Uh, is now obviously does the posters. He's done two of them now. Um, I got in touch with him. I was like, "Hey, I want to have an original poster this time and have it like be look like a movie poster. Would you be interested?" And he was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll do that." And he did it. He enjoyed doing it. And I was luckily like lucky that he came back for the next one. And I'm hoping he will continue to do the posters because I feel his art really helps. I guess you could say market these things. As soon as people see the artwork, they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> and it's like, I've got to listen to this. <laughs> they're so gorgeous. Do you have a copy of those, Andrew Handy? Maybe we can uh, show the audience. They're so good. I, yes, I'll have a look. I might have one. Hold on. <laughs> they're beautiful. Yes. Like, <laughs> like uh, Ark does such an amazing job. Like, when... <laughs> Um, when I saw when when Andrew sent me what it looked like, I was like, "Oh gosh, this is beautiful." <laughs> um, but I'm I'm very curious, um, Andrew. Um, when you tell Ark, um, like, do you give him like some story context, or you know, for the creative direction when designing the poster? I'm very curious. Um, yes, I give him some. Um, like yeah, some notes. I go. I want this character. These are the characters I want on the poster. Um, and I go. Actually, to be fair, I just give him the notes of what the story is about, what characters I I want on the poster. They don't spoil too much of the plot. And then I say to him, "Have you know full reign? Do what you want?" I give him so much freedom, which is why I think he enjoys them. Um, and then he just he gives me this this these posters that I go, "Wow, that's." It's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, I just posted the, the the recent one, number four, in the uh, show discussion. <gasps> it's oh, so wow. pretty. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. It looks so official. I love it. Yeah. So much yeah. detail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you could there. probably sell those. <laughs> yeah. I'd buy yeah, one. Sure yeah. <laughs> no, it, like, oh. like as prints. Yes, like send it, sell it in like the gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> the official Radio Harrow gift shop. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. It's funny enough, we actually had a um, like a poster in the uh, in the studio, didn't we, uh, Tom Ham? Didn't we? Oh, was that sorry? We had a poster of it in the studio, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you printed it out, put it in a nice frame. Yeah, it looked great. Lovely. It, it looked really nice. nice. Really nice place. Yeah. <laughs> um, Boone, do you have another question for them? Um, yeah. Uh, so which special is your favorite so far? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Pick, pick a favorite child, Andrew. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna um, I'll, I'll let I'll let you guys choose first. Um, Tom Han, <laughs> you go first. Tom Han, you go first. What was your favorite? Uh, it was the the last one, uh, number four. I think uh, I remember because every time I I listen to them, I always think in terms of the uh, the dramatic part with the with the characters and stuff. I always think it ain't going to get any better than this, <laughs> and then it always gets better. <laughs> uh, and I thought number four had a really good um, 
just really good sequences. You know, the voice acting was all phenomenal and just the sound design. There's that, there's that great bit where they sneak into the bad Nick place and they're all in disguises. And it's just like, you can really like feel it and like get a sense of the place and, and the, you know, the, the, the humor, the humor is just is so well cut together and it's incredibly funny. So I thought number four was my favorite of the lot because it's just, yeah, I just thought it couldn't get any better, and it did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you, Ghost? Uh, I'm getting... <laughs> How biased can I sound that I was also going to say four, but for the main reason, I'm like, well, I'm in four, so that's a pretty good reason to like it. But I mean, like, like you were saying, how the whole it, it, with each one is like the universe grows and this continuity goes gets stronger, and it's just nice to have more characters doing more out there things like if you compare the first one to the fourth one there's already loads of growth in what in what you've done and it's so nice how it just becomes a more collaborative process with more more and more people joining in including me yeah including so that's, you. that's a plus yeah <laughs> you let me do improv on this one so that's always good oh yeah it did yeah you gave me a whole stack of improv lines I was like I can't choose there's too much good stuff <laughs> a lot more than you needed yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you, Sydney, what, which one oh, would you say is your favorite? You've been oh, there since no. the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's hard. I love them all. Um, the ones, oh, man, I love them all. But if I had to pick ones, I would. The first one was super special uh, for me um, because I that's I think that's when Andrew, like Andrew and I really started working together a, a lot more outside of Revo. Um, it was so much fun to work on, um, and I was so honored that he asked me to to be a part of it. Um, and then I do have a special place in my heart for Special Three. Um, this last year, I was very faithful. I tuned in, almost, tried to tune in every t- Thursday uh, when that would air, and I I love Three. Um, just how it turned out. The one of my favorite parts was when uh, uh, Tails calls in to Studio One. And uh, Tom Ham ninety four and Andrew were responding to tales, and that was, I think, probably my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, but they were all amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I guess for me, I've, I've had a thought about it now. I'm I'm stuck between three and four, um, because three was the change where I, I really got the idea of that they're going these adventures and the. It was became bigger in scale in, in itself, and it felt very cinematic. Um, but number four feels even more cinematic. Like that, the fourth one just feels like an actual full blown movie. But I think I also like the drama between all the characters, and there's a lot more. I think a lot more emotion in the fourth one. Um, with the whole like Amy being kidnapped and being missing, who did it? The mystery. Um, so I guess at the moment I'm gonna have to say number four. Um, it's probably actually my favorite. Um, it's also the first time um, I kind of pushed myself doing more like more than just a simple like you know like with Cream like she's quite innocent like like for this one she had more emotion to show so that was a bit of a challenge for me because I usually I do Cream she's very basic and very like oh you know she's very innocent like and stuff and then with this one I, I got to act like go full on emotions of Cream which was quite quite fun and challenging. And I love everyone's reaction when they go, wait, Sonic and Cream were the same person? <laughs> it's still so crazy that you can do a Cream impression. That is so impressive. It's crazy. Yeah. And so, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how you were able to hit that high voice and at the same time being very emotional with your Cream voice. I was like so shocked and gobsmacked <laughs> when I was listening to it. I was like, how, I was like, Andrew's just surprising us again. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I've learned with Andrew's voices to to not be surprised with the surprises that Andrew pulls. He's amazing. This vocal chameleon. I remember when I first met Andrew, like one of the first things you asked was like, I oh, was like the highest voice you can do. And now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Boy. But but that's great. Like um, <clears throat> that the Sonic Radio specials has been getting a lot of a lot of attention and doing reruns 
<laughs> that that's a pretty good you know pretty good feat you know to have yeah. <laughs> especially number three was on repeat for almost the whole year that's Ooh. just <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy mm-hmm. like oh yes um here's my next question um where can people watch the sonic radio specials oh that's, that's a good question because they're technically exclusive to radio harrow but you can listen to the audio drama bits on my youtube channel but if you want to hear the whole thing, you can only hear it through radio because of the music. Because with Radio Harrow, we have a license, so we can actually play any song technically and allowed to just we're allowed to play them. But through YouTube, you can reach. You know, sometimes you have like copyright issues and things. So Radio Harrow is probably the best place to listen to them. But the sad thing is, they're only up for a certain point, and then they get removed because that's how the system works. Um, but you can always listen to the audio drama um, on YouTube. But that's why I'm hoping with the next one, I'm not going to say too much yet, but the next one I'm hoping to go full on original score and original stuff. So that way you can, always, you can hear the whole thing, its whole entire you know, whole thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually noticed that. So uh, now we know. <laughs> It does get <laughs> removed after a certain certain amount of days. I'm presuming it's like certain amount of days, and then then they remove it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like it's on the system. Like it's still on the system. Like I think you can. I can get number three off the system right now. But eventually, after a year, it deletes all the past uh, shows. So it's uh, mm. it's alive. <laughs> mm. Oh, it looks like looks like we have some audience. But audience answering is so three hands. Okay, um, let's go with Angie. Come on up, Angie. Angie, yay! Hello. Hello. Hi, Angie. Hey, Angie. Hi. Um. So I guess, I guess my question is, um, I don't know if this has been asked already, but. Um, what inspired you to start the Sonic specials, um, Andrew? If that has inspired pretty... me. Yeah. Um, well, I mentioned how I started it, but what inspired me? Um, to be honest, I don't know what inspired me, really. I think it's just because I hear a lot of everyone else's voices and projects. I just felt like I would love to just create a project that we can get everyone involved. And that's how it started, really, I guess. Mm. And I got my... my brother involved and uh he was like yeah right yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> all right well, i guess that answers my question thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> and for those that don't know angie here voices wave in sonic special four yeah that was my first that was my Yay. first time doing that so thank you for that offer i appreciate it you're welcome <laughs> all right bye bye angie bye. thank you for your question um, Boone, would you like to call up the next audience member? For sure. Um, how about we bring up Bolt the Floofy Werewolf? Come on up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Hello. Hello. What's your question? I'll have to turn on some of, turn up some of y'all's um mic volumes because oh. on my end y'all are real quiet. Oh. 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 <sighs> Yeah, like um, like what inspired you guys to start this whole thing, basically? Oh, that was already asked by Angie. Yeah, <laughs> I already answered that one. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, Maybe we can. That's okay. <laughs> it happens. I mean, I could ask. I mean, uh, Tom Ham, what inspired you to like get the quizzes? Where do they come from? How did you get the Ooh. ideas? Oh, um. Well, uh, I grew up uh, in a household that was uh, very into Sonic the Hedgehog. So I have uh, 30 years of Sonic the Hedgehog knowledge just sitting in my brain. And um, yeah, every so often uh, I just sit there and you say to me, oh, I need a quiz for my show. And I just go, right, let's let's find some Sonic music. and. Uh, I just test Andrew's knowledge and see if he can guess the songs. Um, and then, you know, 
Andrew, I mean, you, you say you're quite a big, big Sonic the Hedgehog fan, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just try to really challenge your uh, your knowledge. So you do, you know, yes. Like the get, like the guess the voice actor. It's like you don't just have to guess them. You have to guess. I'm going to make the dialogue the lines in reverse, and then you have to <laughs> listen to them backwards, and then <laughs> see if you can see who they are. And uh, yeah, you know, I think I think that's it. Really, um, I just yeah, I just uh, pull from that. Backlog, backlog of of Sonic the Hedgehog knowledge. <laughs> Your quizzes I mean, are so clever. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Thank you. No, that's right. No, yeah. I mean, I I felt like with with the fourth one, you know, I sort of did the music again because well, I mean, there's so much Sonic music that you know you could you could milk that for ages. But uh, hopefully, with the next one, I can do something a bit more uh, uh, interesting mm. and uh, inventive. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll do some thinking on that, see if I can find something. Mm, that's very interesting to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> Andrew, I'm always impressed with your knowledge. You're like, hey, it's from that video game and that level and, and that song. <laughs> I, I'm like, I mean, I enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog, but man, I don't know those things. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> or like the voice actor one where you're like, it's this character and this voice actor, and you're listening to it in reverse. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Some could even say he predicts the game future. <laughs> Honestly. Yes, it, it's, it's very interesting. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you're doing it, Andrew. I remember <laughs> when you told me that, like, I think I predicted the um, first update of Sonic Frontiers of, like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was quite creepy, yeah. <laughs> Because in the special, it's set in the cyberverse and they're getting the songs. And then they do an update later on about you can collect songs now in the game. <laughs> um, but thank you both for your question. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You. It was nice meeting you guys. And I'll head back down here now. Thank you for the oh, question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Andrew, do you want to pick the next audience member? Oh, I get to pick. Uh, well, I'm going to choose Cutie Cat. Yay! Hello. Hey, Cutie Cat. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, m- most most of the people here I already know, but Tomato Ghost and Tom Ham, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, my my question is to everyone: What mm-hmm. have, so far? What has been your what has been your favorite? moment in the in the sonic radio specials oh. any oh. <laughs> oh, <dang. moment. laughs> that's a good question mm-hmm. it's a very good question oh so many good moments who wants to go first <laughs> that's the question uh good sydney, question. You go, yeah sydney i'm just teasing um <laughs> oh goodness Oh, there's so many. Um, the one I mentioned in Sonic Special 3 when Tails was on the radio no. with uh, Tom Ham and Andrew. And then, oh golly, I loved, loved the performance of Corin as Tangle in Special 4. And yeah. I absolutely yes. loved uh, Neil Metal Sonic in 4. Um mm. Fantastic performance. I, honestly, that is my favorite performance of Metal Sonic that I've heard ever. Um, mm. He just Adam, nailed Adam that amazing. role. Yes, Adam was incredible with that role. So I would, when I was listening to that, I was just absolutely um, entranced with it. Uh, but gosh, there's so many. <laughs> um, and always getting to work with Andrew is an absolute treat. So uh, I. I don't know if I have one, but those were ones that come to mind. You two, yeah. you two are the dynamic duo. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost, how about you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is, is going to be another Tangle related one just because Tangle is just so good. But um, I mean, just a joyful image of Storm swinging Tangle around by the tail. That's just a beautiful, beautiful image. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I mean, that's also yeah, when you yeah, throw yeah. in all the the layered improv going on in there. That's just a delightful scene. When when you sent me that script, I was just like, "Well, 
this is just going to be a delight. And I'm very happy to be involved any in artists, that moment. Just, any artist, if you can, oh. draw draw storms oh, swinging tingle do. around like a god dang mace. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. I mean, that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the fact that, you know, we can convey that even just with audio is delightful. Mm. Yeah. Come him. Um, What's your favorite? Yeah, can I can I pick the the whole of Sonic Special Four? The, 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 <laughs> the drama bit? bit. Can I pick? Can I the pick the whole thing? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I say? I mean, it's great. I mean, I, I guess my favorite scene in the whole thing is probably the bit when they uh, they sneak into the the Badnik um, base yeah. and they they're in disguise. Yeah, and they, yeah, um, <laughs> and they meet Knack and everything. Uh, yeah, it's just the whole great sequence, you know, great, great comedy, great action, you know, it's just terrific. It's just great, you know. Oh, yes, I loved that scene. The sound design in that, that scene is fabulous. Yeah, I like the bit when there's like the music playing and then they get revealed and it's just like, do it. <laughs> it <just ends. laughs> it's so good. Yeah, uh, that's that's probably my, my favorite uh, scene. Uh, from the specials yeah yeah for me oh my gosh it, it's hard to pick because there's a lot of favorite bits i love number two uh with the sonic and eggman fight that was great um i also love a lot of the scenes in number three the, when they're trying to work out the uh, the riddles that was really fun and the floors breaking every time they get a question wrong um yeah, and also, I guess, like I said, I also I kind of agree with my brother. I I love a lot of the scenes in the fourth one. Um, when them being in disguises and Sydney's tails performance in that was just great, especially the whole tails nater and um, <laughs> <laughs> and the whole like them co- coming up with their own names like mechanical or tank of doom, which is actually a very very odd reference to a video game that no one probably knows. It's called Tiny Tank for the PlayStation. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm losing you. I'm losing you, Andrew. Uh, is it just me? I, I lost you twice. Uh, um, maybe a Discord. Oh, okay. Fine. I, yeah, it does that, it does this. You just cut mm-hmm. out. I've, I've lost him again. Is everyone else losing him? <laughs> no, 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 just googling he's new tiny to Discord, tank everybody. Tom, Tom Ham is new to Discord, so he's not he's not used to it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, it takes some yeah, use to. Um, no, I love the whole with the with the came with robot names and um, yeah, mecha- mechanical tank of doom is a, is a reference to Tiny Tank. Um, <laughs> it's a little obscure game from the PlayStation that I loved as a child, and I just had to throw that reference in. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I loved a lot of number four. I, I like I say, it's the spider, the spider cave bit with Rouge coming to their rescue. That I, I love the epicness of that one, um, especially with you know Sydney, your tails line. We say push the boulder. It's just <laughs> it was so epic. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was fun with uh, Sonic Special Four. Uh, I recorded live with Andrew, and it was so fun to uh, bounce off. Uh, of him as a director with Tails is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many takes? Just... <laughs> oh yes, lots of. Blue- how many takes did we do of the uh, the Terminator? <laughs> um, was... How many loads? There's there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> we, Andrew in the script was like, uh, do it like Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I was like. Oh jeez! <laughs> it was so much fun. Andrew was so patient and like directing me and helping me with that line. <laughs> that was a fun one to do. Yeah, <laughs> I also do love Andrew. the whole Tangle and Storm chemistry in, in that <laughs> scene. It just it bounces so well. I love it, especially the whole like he, th- he calls her a raccoon. <laughs> 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 Oh yes, it was so fun. Sly, sly, t- sly tangle, and it was like. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that answer your question, Kitty Cat? It sure does. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, have a good day, everyone, and and straight up the, the radio specials, amazing. Can't, can't wait to see what comes oh, in the future. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Oh yes, we got we got lots of plans. I hope so.
<laughs> oh, okay, wait. Um, I have a question pertaining to that regarding Sonic Radio Special Four. I'm curious. Um, how did that um scene of Sonic Tails and Cream disguising themselves as robots? How did that idea come to be? I'm very curious. Oh, um, so I've always had this idea in my head of like Sonic and Tails being in disguise. It was because funny enough, originally it was just going to be Sonic and Tails. Cream wasn't going to come on the adventure in the original script. She was only in the beginning and that was it. Um, I, I decided to keep her in the plot and I think she became the, 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 what's the word? The heart of the story in the end, the heart like that brought it all together with her emotion with, you know, it feels like a failure for not helping out Amy and stuff like that. But I always had this I like this scene in mind with Sonic and Tails dressed in disguises. I was actually I was actually inspired by uh, the Great Mouse Detective actually when they're in, in disguises going into the uh, the bar. Oh really? Oh, that makes a lot of sense that's now. Right, that, that's a great Fantastic. reference. <laughs> that that was the scene that inspired me because I was rewatching it. And I thought I want to do a scene like this with Sonic and Tails. <laughs> oh, that's and, um, perfect. And that's what inspired the whole scene. I just wrote it with that in mind and listened to the soundtrack or write in the script. <laughs> oh, that is very interesting to learn because <laughs> that scene made me laugh when I listened to it. <laughs> um, but here you hear it. You heard it here, folks. It's literally from the Great Mouse Detective. Right? <laughs> inspired <laughs> by Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> inspired. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. You can't argue. Yeah. <laughs> so many little Easter eggs. That's so yeah. neat. Mm-hmm. The little tiny tank, great moss detective. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> tiny tank. That's so obscure. Um. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Leah. <laughs> um, Boone. Do you have another question for them? Yes, I do. So. I know it was mentioned that Ghost provided a lot of amazing improvised lines. Um, Do you usually try to stick to the script, or is improv heavily encouraged? Ooh, Uh, good question. Well, for for this one, um, for number four, I gave him permission to, like, improv, because it says in the script, improv lines. (laughs) (laughs) The same with with, uh, Corrid, with Tangle. It says improv, and she gave me a lot of improv as well, which was used. Um... But usually, I don't mind if the voice actors want to improvise. Um, I find that a lot of my sonic lines are improvised a lot of the time. I have a script to follow, but then I change a lot of it and I record it. Um, I mean, Sydney, do you improvise some Tales lines? I think you do sometimes. You've done some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I remember, okay, so there's a part in the Sonic Radio specials, like Sonic says, like, we're going to go warp speed, and so, uh, Tails gets sick routinely with the going on warp speed, and so uh, oh. I got a note to say, hey, you know, like, make it sound like he's throwing up, and I sent take after take after take, <laughs> just improvising him, like, just trying to keep his guts in, and th- that was super, super fun. In fact, that... You use some of those uh, improv for you changed the ending for Sonic Three because of um, we were when we were talking about him tails having stomach issues after going through <laughs> Sonic Three, like getting s- s- uh, motion sickness. Yes, yeah, yeah, that that wasn't part of the script. I just ended it with um, tails vomiting at the end. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt. Me- when in, yeah, exactly. When in doubt, it was, it was so brilliantly put together. <laughs> me. Um, so I would say that one was one I improvised a lot on uh, for Tales. Uh, that was that's probably my one of my favorite parts. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> I th- I think the improv like always is always adds a little sparkle to the scripts. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I think so too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I think that just speaks how great of a director Andrew is because he can allow that sparkle to happen. Um, and sometimes that always doesn't always happen with directors. And Andrew just like gives the actor just enough freedom, but guidance to help us bring that sparkle about. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because I think I gave a lot of freedom to um, Fang's voice actor, Naze. Um, he had a lot of fun in that session. Um, I gave him like live direction and stuff, and he was like improvising so much as well. It was, uh, it was, it was, he was fun. Oh, his performance was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he's become <laughs> like the definitive Fang voice now. I see Fang or Nack, I just go Naze. I just think of him every time. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great performance. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> um, here is my next question. I'm very curious. Which cut content was something you wanted to include but couldn't? Oh. Oh, there was uh, the number three had the most cuts. Um I mean Shadow was gonna appear in the third one, but he was cut. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. oh wow. Shadow, Shadow, Originally, in the ending, um, Shadow was going to come to Sonic and Tails' rescue. Um, that was swapped to Silver in the end, and I think it worked better with Silver. Um, and Silver was voiced by Kelp in number three. Kelp, again, did a terrific performance as Silver. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, Shadow was cut in number three. Rouge was meant to be in number three and was also cut. <laughs> um there was a fight scene with Knuckles and Metal Sonic, and that was cut in number three. Um, I think, yeah, three had the most most things cut. Um, yeah, I mean, the but actually, funny enough, the Rouge scene um, did get moved moved over to number four. So it pretty much came back with the spider and everything. So I just had this obsession about having a giant spider fighting Sonic and Tails. <laughs> and it was so well done. <laughs> oh that's very interesting because i always love hearing about the cut content you know because i i know some cut content always tends to happen in any form of media and <laughs> and that's pretty interesting to learn that um shadow was initially supposed to be in in radio special three um yeah. It's quite very interesting. <laughs> yeah. The thing with these specials, a lot changes as you write it. I mean, the original ending to number four was drastically different. Um, I think only you, Sydney, know the original ending, I think. <laughs> oh, yes. I think, you sh- yeah. <laughs> You're the only one I think I've told the ending. You were like, oh, that's a really good ending, actually, but I ended up changing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, basically, Shall the ending we- originally was going to be Metal Sonic puts his subconscious into Amy's body. And so, Am- so Metal Sonic was Amy to use the device because the device wow. can only be used by organic life forms. But I decided to change that because I wasn't sure if like having those Metal Sonic lines coming out of Amy would have the same impact. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Amy, we've got Doom in the audience. Hi, Doom. Yes, we do, yes. <laughs> yes. Doom is the voice of Amy. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Sydney, do you want to choose the next audience member? Oh, sure. Let's see. We've got... Let's do uh, Dino Kaiju. Come on up. Hey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, hi. Dino. Welcome. Hello. Hey. here. You were saying something? Oh, hello. <laughs> well, great to see everyone. Um, like Kitika said, I know everyone here. You know, Boone, Andrew, um, Sydney, and Leah here. But it's co- co- cool to meet a Ghost and Tom here. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, I actually have a question uh, for, uh, for everyone here. Um, how is the process of coming up with uh, the stories and what theme and characters you wanted to add for a lot of these specials. Because I know, I believe Sonic's uh, radio special two was the was mostly on uh, Sonic's birthday, and you know uh, the other characters coming around crashing, literally, like what happened with Knuckles and all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, how's the process of that and coming and see what certain characters you want to appear, mm. and the stories as well. Um. Yeah, I kind of base the stories off whatever's coming out, really. Um, like with number three, it was in the, like loosely based off Frontiers. I say loosely, but like very loosely based off Frontiers. Um, yeah, just the idea of just these ideas come in and go, they're going to connect to something coming out. Like number four, 
was supposed to be out last year. That's why it's very Amy themed and Sonic CD themed. Um, Cause it was, it was to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Sonic CD. So that's where the idea of that came from. Um, yeah, I mean, with with the character characters, I just like to mix up the cast, which I think is what my brother said. Like he like he like he you you said that didn't you? He said mixing up the cast is actually quite nice. Yes, mm. um, I can kind of yeah. yeah, which is why which is why I see why characters like uh like Tangle and Storm were in Special Four. Is that that like that seems to be the case? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because it just makes it like like you get excited, like who's going to appear next? Like you just don't know what's going to happen. And I think that's what makes these specials fun. Like you just don't know what's going to happen <laughs> in in these plot lines. Like you might think, oh, they're going to save the day, right? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> um, the world may yeah. never know. <laughs> and the endings, you just don't you just don't know what's going to happen. Really, I remember like number three ended like with that post credit scene with. Uh, the surprise, you know, surprise cameos of Blaze and Marine. Like, yeah, that was a nice surprise for everybody. Um, and that's what I love to do as well. I love teasing people with the post credit scenes. Like, you just don't know what's going to come up. <laughs> I literally yelled at the end of Special Four when I found out who was coming. <laughs> I yelled yeah, I in my kitchen. Why. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I was thrilled. <laughs> that one I didn't know. Usually, I have a heads up of who, where, what's coming in the script. I did not know that ending was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was so kept. You, so, so you had to, oh, sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's, it's been that was kept so secret. Like the only people that knew was obviously Ultimate. MC and me were the only three that knew about that post credit scene. <laughs> oh, uh, I was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a certain fire cat princess from another dimension? That too. <laughs> I was so excited <laughs> when Andrew handed me to me that script. I think that's why these are always really fun because you just, it's, you can combine any sort of character combination that you want, and that's really cool. Yeah, you can throw Sonic characters just in a room and something's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the Sonic Speed Q&A that happened uh, years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like that, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I guess that pretty much answers my question. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that at the moment. And uh, thank you so much for the answer, guys. And uh, yeah, and uh, best of luck with the fifth one if that were to happen later. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, Tom Ham, do you want to choose the next audience member? Yes. I will pick Amadea, the cast. Um, you go to the... I'm um, up there. Oh, I um, got I'm you, sorry, Tom. I'm very new to this. I just oh, love that. I'm very new to this. There we go. <laughs> yep, it's right. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. I don't know how to get people on stage. <laughs> um, like, I basically know everyone here, <laughs> but anyway... My question is, um, do you guys have any tips on like doing voice acting? Ooh. That's Ooh. a good question. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ghost, you can go first. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got um, this, Ghost. You can do it. I, I can do this. I what believe. Time now? <laughs> I believe in myself. <laughs> I believe. <like> <laughs> yes. Okay, so I think. And there's something I think I've definitely talked to. I I remember. I think me and Andrew was walking down Oxford Street talking about this once. Um. There's something about voices that I've noticed some people that I don't mean some people that like I've heard before, and that is voice is kind of like an instrument in that there is there's you can have a voice, but you need to learn how to play with it as well. Like an example I always use is like you know uh, Rocket Raccoon from Guardians. Everyone knows yeah you know, in the movies it sounds like this and all that, and everyone does yeah. that for example. But then with emotional range you need to be able to like lower and higher it. Like people forget that while he is up here, he sometimes goes down here when he's more serious and it's still the same voice yeah. and character. So you need to remember that it's not just it, like just doing a voice. There is also, you have to have that character behind it, that emotional range too. Yeah. And that, that I hope that helps because that really just came out of my that's, mouth. Yeah, that actually does. That's a pretty good way of saying it. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad it made sense. I also recognize you as the guy that did like Garfield caught in the act review. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love that video so much. I'm glad. It's thank you very much. It's in my watch later playlist, and I've already watched the video, but it just keeps staring at me like, 
oh hey i know this dude it's a, it's a good <laughs> that thumbnail of garfield just staring <laughs> thank you very much yeah game's also actually pretty decent it's a great game um how about you sydney oh gosh um tom said it really really well it's always acting first voice second but if I were to give another piece of advice is to get used to performing in front of people. Um, when you are in the booth, sometimes you're by, my, you're by yourself, but most often you're with producers or you're with uh, your director, other actors, um, you're in front of an audience. So I would say if you can, get used to being up on stage. And you can do this through different ways. You can do public speaking. You can take a public speaking class. You can do drama. Uh, music, anything that will get you in front of people to get you used to performing in front of people, I would say is very important. Yeah. That's true. That's, That's very, very good. True. Yeah. Like let anxiety go away. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Learning how to channel your nerves to work for you instead of against you is mm. very key. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I consider myself yeah. like, um, I'd say primarily I am a stage actor. So it is actually nice to. Like have that experience and just hop in the booth. So it's it's I so I, I, I find voice acting less intimidating. I say while stumbling over my words. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you're totally good. I stumble all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we but act. So we have a script. That's right. Yes, that's why we have a script and a director to tell them you to do it again. So you're yeah, good. I'm glad I'm not I alone. <laughs> I became an actor so someone else could tell me what to do. <laughs> exactly. Um, how about you, Andrew? Um. Yes, um, I, I think Sydney and Ghost have covered a lot of it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all about the acting. It's all about being the character, understanding that character, yeah. and becoming, I guess you could say, becoming one with the characters. And also yeah. to learn how all voices are connected. You know, and when you do an impression, you know, try and make it also like for, throw your own spin on it. Like when I do my. I guess, you know, Sonic voice, it's inspired by Ryan Drummond, but if you actually compare me and Ryan, there is a difference of mm -hmm. how we sound, and it's because the performance sounds so, like, like it is basically Sonic. Thing. Yeah, that, yeah, distinct. That's why people feel, oh, it sounds like Ryan talking. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I just hear um, that's Sonic. <laughs> yeah. So long as you get the character down, the the voice is going to come come with it because, you know, if you if you do like an average impression, but your performance is so strong, the impression is going to sound fantastic. You know, no, that's that's a really good point you just made there yeah. as well. I think of, I've, the amount of times I've been told like, "Oh, don't do an impression. I just want to get like the character's energy yeah. out of it." Yeah, like yeah. help spice it up. Don't just like try to copy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Always always add your own signature because. It helps. It helps it become your own over time, you know. Because yeah. I feel like the Sonic, the Sonic I do has become its own now uh, over time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's inspired by Venture Sonic, but it's it's kind of become its own. I guess you could say Revo yeah. Radio Sonic. <laughs> I guess. And someday I hope to hear it in a game. Well, and, and, and Sonic. And people recognize it right away. They're like, "Oh, mm. it's Sonic talking to me." Um, yep. And. And that's how, because Andrew has mastered the character, or like Ghost with Storm. Um, they mm -hmm. know the character. Oh, like they put tails. the acting first. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The, the character comes first. You have to portray the spirit first before mm. the voice. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, does that answer your question, Amadeus? Yeah, that actually answers it pretty well. I mainly wanted to ask because I thought about joining like different projects at some point. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you should. That helps. Yeah, and that also just helps me think. Hmm, this is probably how I should get better at voice acting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, do you mind if I ask a question to Tom Ham? Um, Tom, you do a lot of radio stuff, and I'd love to hear your perspective on being on the mic. Uh, because being in radio is a sh very big job, and people make their careers out of it, just like you. And so I'd love to hear your perspective of what it's like to be behind the mic. Mm. Oh, um, oh. Oh, I put me on the spot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't really think about it too much. I just, uh, I guess, I just try not to overthink anything. And just, yeah. Just, I just feel like if you're having a good time, then hopefully your your audience is having a good time. You know, 
Um, that's a good yeah. that's good advice mm. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah there we go that, you, that's my that's my little bit <laughs> I, I love that because in radio you, p- listeners do drive off that energy and you know, I think that's really cool radio is an art in itself that I, oh, yeah. I don't even know yeah. man so anybody in radio I just admire so much yeah uh, so that's another route Amadeus is to look into radio yeah. as well those yeah, are really yeah. cool careers. Yeah, like like yeah. podcasts and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or like on the br- broadcast radio. Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I right in thinking that's how yeah. Mike Pollock got started? It is. I think it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, and, and um, oh, oh my gosh, Mel Blank. That's how he got started. Mel Blank, yeah. And, uh, of course. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Okay. Yo, Heathcliff, the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and what's that really famous actress? She was in Looney Tunes as well. June She's like, think, Yes, June Foray. She was in radio oh, yeah. too. So that's a great route. So if you want to, you can be like Tom and Andrew and go the radio route as well and get used to being in front of the mic and learning mm. the equipment and stuff. Yeah. I'll take Just that in mind. mind. Just look for like a local radio station in your area. I'm sure there is one. Yeah. Yes. Or if you're going to school, a lot of schools, like colleges or high schools, will have um, mm. radio and I media. I like graduated. Classes. Oh, nice! Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, no. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, you should check that out. There's a lot of venues. Yep. But that answers my question really well. Hopefully, you guys <laughs> have a good day. Also, I've just been into Rocket Night Adventures for a long time. That's my profile. Yes. Um, just have a good one. You too. You too. Have a lovely day. <laughs> also, amazing advice, you guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I actually agree, you know, like, radio is a form of, like, you know, um, because when you are on radio, it is, you know, and there's people tuning in. So it, it is another form way to practice like um pretty much being in front of a in front of a audience mm. it's, it's it's another form of voice work you know um, it is yeah and i have to give it oh sorry go ahead um i find a lot of people seem to like don't really recognize like how much radio is also a good starting point for voice servers it's kind of mm. uh, looked over i find that's true yeah, and uh, listening. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you gone. <laughs> oh, you're good. Uh, listening to you, Tom and Andrew. You both have like the soothing way. Uh, maybe, maybe it's all because you all have such. Uh, you all are just so good at your jobs. You have such a soothing way. Like whenever I listen in to Radio Hero, I'm just kind of put at ease. I feel like I'm part of the family or part of the conversation. Whenever I listen to you and all of the Radio Hero crew, um, you all do such an amazing job. Um, with your work. It's so good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Ghost, would you like to choose the next audience member? Yay, my turn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's go with uh, Mr. JRPG, if I remember how to add people. RPG. Mr. JPEG. Hey. Mr. JPEG. Oh, yeah, that's a JPEG. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> Another fun fact: he, he also voiced cameo Badnix in Sonic Special really? Four. Did you yeah, see which one was him? How do I, I add them to the chat? Oh, do you need oh. them? I got you. There you go. There we go. Just, I, I could have just came up myself, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 fine. Okay, so hi hi guys. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, so my question kind of is, you know, from from all aspects, whether it being the person who put it together, the person who provided their voice for it, or just like, you know, put everything together. Uh, how did it just feel like seeing the final product for the first time? Like, what was just your reaction towards it all? Oh, good question. Very good question. I'll let um, Tom Ham start this one. All right, my connection went all. Funny there. What was the uh, question again? Sorry. The question was pretty much like from your perspective, like however you were involved in all of the Sonic specials, what is just what was just like your reaction to like seeing the final product for like the very first time each and every time? Um yeah, I mean, so my my role is just a co-host, I guess, with Andrew live uh, on the day and to provide the quiz and provide the sort of 
the breaks between um, the, the dramatic parts, the, the story parts. Um, and I find that's quite, um, obviously, Andrew's my, my brother uh, by blood. Uh, I've known him since my whole life. So I find it very easy to talk to him. So that whole the live sections are always very easy um, in that sense. Um, I mean, in terms of hearing the, the actual story elements, I mean, again, they're just, uh, they're just amazing. They're just, uh, honestly, Andrew, you know, I meet him while he's working on it and he's like, oh, I've been up since I'm going to bed at 5 a.m. every day. And I'm just like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a, you should get some sleep, bro. Uh, and then it's like, you know, he comes out with these, these wonderful segments and it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's paid off. It's amazing. It's so good. Um, so I'm always, yeah, I'm always incredibly, uh, impressed uh, with with the the production values. The production values are so good, uh, considering they're essentially it's just you, Andrew, in your bedroom <laughs> working in <laughs> what Garage Band, I guess, <laughs> or Garage Band, yeah, Garage Band. So it's just you know amazing, and it's the same with the with the quality of all the the voice actors involved. It's just. You know, you as Sonic and uh, Sydney as Tails and so on. It's just like, it's, it's just, it's like the real deal, you know? It's like, it's like a, an official licensed uh, project, you know? So, yeah, I'm always uh, consistently uh, blown away, basically. So, yeah, that's how I feel. Awesome. Uh, would anybody like to go next? Host? You want to go next? Yeah. I was just thinking. Uh, no, is what's really nice about having having a, a small role in this is that I get I get to do the voice acting bit, but then because I'm only focused on my bit, I, nothing spoiled. So when the, I hear the final thing, That's I'm true. like, "Well, this is just thrilling and exciting." <laughs> and also, I mean, the, the most the most joy I think any any voice actor can get is that because even if you read the full script, it's still just text to hear the final thing. It's just so satisfying. It's like, yeah, it's like editing a video and just having everything slap into place so perfectly. Well, I suppose it is editing, isn't it? Yeah. But um, <laughs> that's beautiful. And it's just, yeah, any, any creative process that ends with just a nice final product. It's just so satisfying. It's and rewarding. It, it's very re- rewarding. And as an actor, there's nothing more exciting just to like hear yourself back and be like, I mean, I'm in a thing. That's always so I'm nice. In a thing. That's me. <laughs> I did it. I made it. <laughs> so that's always great. That's <laughs> that's <me. laughs> there I am, Gary. There I am. <laughs> yeah. it's, the Leo, it's a Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he like yeah, yeah, yeah. and points at the TV. <laughs> that's it. Because, yeah, because I go through it in it. I'm like, oh, Sonic Tails, Cream on that. St- Wait, Babylon Rogues, Storm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm in this bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I, I am. A, I am going to make a confession. I have not listened to Sonic Four. I'm sorry, but oh, uh, you'll be pleased. But, but look, I think it's like I still saw me mentioned in like the tweets Andrew posted on uh, on Twitter, and like I saw my name, and I know I'm listed as like cameo Banik, and I'm just like, hey, look, I was in that. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah, just to see just you see a name credited to that is always yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, that's that's always that's always a joy. Um, so <laughs> Andrew, and now you can there. watch it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of waiting until probably Andrew uploads the audio drama bits on yeah. his YouTube because that's like where I listen to uh, Sonic Special Three, and I think that is like honestly my favorite out of the specials so far. Hear, hear that, Andrew? There's a there's a demand. <laughs> there is. Well, don't worry, the audio drama will be re-airing on Radio Harrow first uh, for, as the whole audio drama without the show bits um, because the fourth one. Like I said, it's, it's an hour long. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Um, they will have the songs, though. The songs will still be included. So there will be still little song breaks, um, which I guess makes it an hour, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, you can re-listen to it when it's on radio again, or you can just wait till the YouTube release. But yeah, yeah I'm probably going to wait until the, the YouTube release, honestly. <laughs> That's fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so so yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I think, okay, this is my take on it. I, when I listen to something that I'm in and I forget, I'm so involved with the story and character chemistry that I forget that I voiced that character. 
Um, wow. And so when I'm so involved with it that I, I have to, I kind of wake myself up and like, oh my gosh, no, I voiced this character. And that happened with, uh, especially with uh, Sonic Special 3, that um, I was just so lucky to work on and work with all of the actors in the cast and the chemistry was just so on point. I wasn't thinking about my voice. I was thinking about Tails. I was thinking about Sonic. And I think for me, yeah. that's the sign that I did my job um, was that I, the immersion, um, the, the immersion, the characters, the chemistry was so well put together. The writing was so put together that I don't think about it. Um, I'm involved yeah. in the story. Yeah, it's just that illusion just is is over just what you were in. And it's just you, you imagine the characters and not really that you don't think at first, oh, wait, I, I was I was involved in this. I actually provided this. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I'm not thinking about myself voicing it. I don't think mm -hmm. about, oh, I, I voiced that line. No, I'm thinking about Tales. And uh, I think that's for me, for these specials, that's what I, I've experienced. And that's when I'm like, yes, we did it. Um, yeah, I think definitely it's like you see the the performance before you kind of realize like that you were in it. Yeah, much. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Andrew, you're your last but not least. Yes. Um yeah, when they when I see the finished or hear the finished product, um I'm always I guess you could say I get a bit emotional because it's like because when you make these things, especially when they're passion projects, sometimes we never get to finish them or we have to like restart them or you go, oh, yeah, I forgot I was working on that. And you go, oh, but with this, like to see them actually get finished and there's actually, you know, it's actually on a like on an actual radio station. It's like you go, it feels surreal. And you go, oh, like it's it's here. It's it's actually happening. <laughs> um, and I agree with Sydney, like you, you do forget. Like you're in these things, you know, because I'm busy editing them. So I feel like <laughs> I'm like working with the characters, and I go, "Oh yeah, that's me doing the voice." <laughs> um, yeah, and just everyone, everyone does a terrific job. Like, like you know, you know, Doom down here in the audience. You know, she does a terrific Amy. You you think that's Amy Rose? <laughs> you know, you yeah, forget exactly. it's <laughs> yeah, you forget it's people, and it's like. I think that's the power of audio and performance. If it's, if it's done right, you're going to believe it. And yeah. I, and one of the goals with these specials is that I want the characters to feel real. And mm -hmm. I think cause it's on radio, people think it's real. Cause it's like, they've come down to like to visit as guests to do these shows. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it's quite funny, actually, because in Harrow, there's actually an area in Harrow called Green Hill. So it makes it sound like <laughs> it's something like girls are living there right now. You know what I mean? So it's quite it's quite ironic. Wow. <laughs> so, Sonic and Tails yeah. that live in the UK. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. <laughs> they, they have been spotted there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it's quite funny that because when because Radio Harrow sometimes before it starts, there's little advert things and it just mentions places. It goes from you know Ricelip to Eastcote to Green Hill. It's like there we go. <laughs> I can only assume that's where the Fleetway comics take place. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a magical right, thing. It's, it's yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. It's All a magical right. thing. Yeah. Well, um, amazing. I I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear from all perspectives, uh, and I think that only just makes me want to just praise the the final products even more. Now. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, I mean, yeah. Just knowing that all you guys were like involved in like pretty much. I mean, I know like Ghost was in the fourth one as as Storm, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, like a Andrew, Sydney, Tom. They've been like there from the beginning. It's well, still all you guys probably did no did amazing in oh. each and every product from the sounds of it so mm -hmm. i honestly just have nothing but like just praise for all of you guys thank you oh, thank you thank you. <laughs> thank you all right uh you guys have a great rest of your day you too you too right. so you too oh Boon, leah I, I hope you don't mind i have a question uh do you mind if i ask yeah, sure. I um, so Tom Ham, how much did you know about the script 
before you and Andrew host it live, do you know about it or are you being surprised as you're on air? Oh, yeah. he, he doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no I, I don't know a single. I don't know a single thing before it starts. He, he, he uh, yeah, he doesn't tell me nothing. No, um, wait. So he just says, he just says, prep your bits, and then this is what we're going to talk about live, and I say, cool, and then the rest, he just, you know, yeah, it's his, his, it's his baby, really. It's I, I just help out. <laughs> oh, but you, you do such a great job. Well, do you know that? Okay, then I must ask you because it's one of my favorite parts is when Tails calls into Studio One uh, on episode three. Was was that you? Did you know about that, or were you acting? Uh, were you reacting uh, to that live? Oh. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I I think Andrew was like, no, actually, no. I think it was completely live. I don't think he told me that we we're going to yeah, have it a was chat. Live. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, had no I, I had no idea. I had no idea, so I was just saying whatever I wanted to say to Tails. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, you were that was awesome. You played that off so well. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he doesn't tell I'm me so anything. He, he, he I, I love this because, yeah, I like, I like to surprise him and see his reaction when, when he hears it live and, you know, to see how he reacts to it. And I'm always love watching him listening to it. <laughs> oh, when I listened to three, when I heard Tom, you were saying like, Oh, big fan tales, or like you were trying to talk to him. I felt so bad. I was like, Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no that's all right. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, oh, yeah. I was a big fan. But you know, my, yes. my favorite character, yes, yes. Oh, that's based. <laughs> Good choice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I love him too. Yeah, no, yeah, no, all, all completely, yeah, uh, improvised. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen, <laughs> except for the bit I plan. I know, I know that. <laughs> well, those quizzes are fire, and the questions <laughs> oh, you bring are you. so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll try and I'll try and jazz it up again for the next one. For sure. I'm excited to see. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so pretty much Andrew just doesn't tell you anything of what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of like Andrew wants to see your genuine reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like his guinea pig. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's it's so like, if I'm not enjoying it, then he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 always, they're always great, so he, he doesn't have to worry. Though, um, um, really quick, I, I do want to mention how cool it is to see two brothers teaming up to put together a project. It's that so is cool. Neat, and, and support a family are just amazing. I love your guys' work. Keep it up, guys. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, as, as brothers, we sort of, um, when we were little, we used to like, uh, I guess this is quite weird, but we used, we used to like, you know, play with toys and stuff. But we would like make films with the toys, like on the fly. Uh, and then like we'd do like trailers before the films and we'd just do that as well. It's all very odd. But I guess that's probably one of the reasons why we're quite good. It's probably one of the reasons why we're quite good at playing off each other because we used to just improvise like an 80 minute <laughs> film with our toys when we were little and just like have a story and characters and all that. And yeah, I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, good times. Yeah. <laughs> good times. Yeah, there were some good times. <laughs> mm. All right. Looks like we have all bring up Rain Boom. Because she's the only one who's raised her hand. Hi, Rainboom. Hello. How are you all doing? <laughs> doing pretty well. Hello. Good. Hello. Hey. Hi, it's Rainbow. been a while since I all not seen you on the Sonic Radio special. Oh, it's so yeah. much fun. Indeed. So um, I have to ask you to everyone, um, which was your one of your most favorite parts in the uh, Sonic Radio specials? Ooh. Favorite parts. Like now, everyone has to. Everyone has to think now. <laughs> Friends so be many. like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, there's just so many. <laughs> I know, like each right? Scene just just gets uh, more and more interesting. <laughs> I guess. I guess I can go first because I've I've done the least, so it's easy for me to pick. Um, considering I've only been in one scene, but I mean, yeah, the whole raccoon argument that just evolved into just like improv you could barely hear in the background from Tangle and Storm that was delightful Ooh. <laughs> I mean any moment where because 
I mean, the whole thing just came about because Andrew just randomly messaged like, uh, can you voice Storm? I was like, I don't know. Let's find out. And then he turned around and said, cool. And now it includes improv. I'm like, delightful. Let's have a go. And I, yeah. <laughs> it, it was a few minutes of improv you had to cut down to like seconds. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, any, anything to do with that. And also, I mean, even though Tangle, like, Tangle's voice wasn't in the room, somehow it, it, they bounced off each other very well. Mm. So that's definitely my choice. That was a great scene. Mm, oh, so yeah, more, more improv, Andrew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a dynamic that you didn't know you needed. You know, Storm and Tangle. It's like, it just it works so well. <laughs> that, that, I don't know how there's going to be more of that, but I'm down for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go next, though. Um, besides some of the scenes I've already mentioned, another favorite of mine was a climax, the climax scene in number three, uh, tails nearly barfing, um, you know, about to vomit, <laughs> and uh, the, the me tunes as, as Eggman in that one. Um, there was me tunes in that one. Uh, he was very good. Um, the Titan awakening. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was just so epic in scale. And Silver coming to the rescue, Sonic about to like sacrifice himself to, the, to do chaos control, and Ah, it's so good. It was, it was, it was really good. Number three's ending. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It was to go next. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mentioned that uh, that bad Nick scene uh, for when they have to sneak in. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it's hard to pick a scene. Really, I only, mean, I mean, it's all still very well polished. So, I, I mean, out of the th- through four of them, I think two, three, and four are the strongest. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I mean, I love the, I love the story. I love all the, all the drama bits, uh, especially. Uh, yeah, it's just great stuff. Really good. Ooh. Can't really pick a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess for me, I well, Revel no, the Revel cast knows this, but I enjoy screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do is to scream and do um, effort and impacts. Um, so what efforts are is when something your your the character is acting on something else and impacts is when something is acting on you. Um, and so there's a lot of fight scenes in three and four. And so I had to provide uh, a lot of <laughs> like the, those kind of sounds. And Andrew did such a great job mixing those together to sound like he was getting hit. So I he'd mix a an effort with or no excuse me an impact with like a punch or something like that and i think that i really was super excited on how those turned out um because it does sound like tails is getting socked <laughs> i love it um <laughs> it's so good um but of course i remember one day uh, andrew texted me while i was at work he said hey you know i'm thinking about changing the ending what do you think and here i'm listening to i so i go on my break and i'm I pull up the audio and i and I, I'm listening to it, and it's here's Tails is like barfing on the radio console. I'm like, this is the best day of my life, and I, I that was one of my favorite parts. Mm. So that, that's awesome. Yeah, it's those like little details that make the make the show that much uh, more amazing. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially what? with the fourth one, there's a lot of. Um, if you pay attention to the plot, there's a lot of foreshadowing. You know what I mean, like. <gasps> You kind of pick up who's behind it if you listen. If you listen very carefully, and and uh, some of the lines they say kind of foreshadows the what's the climax is going to happen. Um, I, I kind of picked up. I picked up on that myself when I listened to it. <laughs> oh, so I didn't. It's so brilliantly written. I didn't realize until I heard it. I was like, wait a minute, that actually happens at the ending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, um, did that answer your question, Rainboom? Yeah, that's entering my question. So before I go, I just wanted to give you a big shout, big shout out to all of you who was working on the Sonic Radio special so, so far. Ho- hopefully, there's going to be more Sonic Radio special specials in the future. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Well, take care, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye Rain Boom. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> oh i've been oh here's my next question i'm very curious andrew um and sydney um how do you tap into sonic and tails's brotherly bond and how would you describe it has evolved through sonic radio specials 
Oh, dang, that's a good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> uh, um, ooh. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, me yeah, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we just, I, I think it's just the natural chemistry we, we, we have when we play the characters. Um, mm -hmm. We have a very good dynamic that seems to come off really well. Like, like you know, um, like me and me and Tom Ham's mum, you know, she she listens to them. She's not massive on Sonic, but she knows of Sonic, and she's always like hooked and immersed into the into the storylines. And she listens to him and like loves the dynamic, like the chemistry between me and Sydney doing Sonic and Tails. And she feels like, oh, that's Sonic and Tails talking. <laughs> um, I think it's just. We, I don't know, it started with the Sonic Revo panel, didn't it? Where I first met you and um, you could just yes. feel it straight away. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I remember the first panel we were in together and I knew of Andrew before because he, uh, he and I, we were in the, the Sonic, Re, Sonic Adventure 2 Reimagined project. Um, and so I knew of Andrew, and then we we were brought into Revo, and I remember we performed together the first panel, and then yeah. I think it just kind of went from there. We would do panel after panel, and like this chemistry was so natural. Um, yeah, it just I, it just clicked, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good way to put it. Um, I I base it a lot of actually off of my own brothers and my relationship with my younger brothers. Um, and just like how Hales approaches Sonic and how um, uh, just uh, I, I think that's part of it. But also, too, Andrew is always game to play. And that's the, that's the thing with improv and acting. You have to always be willing to take what another person will throw at you. Um, and I think Andrew's oh, yeah. always talented at that. Like, I don't know, I'll just throw something out of the blue. Like one time I was like, Sonic, like your breath stinks. And Andrew was <laughs> like. Andrew just went with it and uh, um, just things like that. So no, I think that's something that Andrew plays well. And that's something I really like look up to. Um, but I think that really helps with our chemistry together with Sonic and Tails. So we've been doing a lot of Sonic and Tails together and it's so much fun. And we've been yeah. actually confused a couple times. Somebody said, hey, are th is that Ryan Drummond and Emmy Jones yeah. on there? <laughs> or or we've had people say, oh my gosh, it's a... Oh, now I'm forgetting the names. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, is that Ryan Drummond and Colleen O'Shaughnessy? Or like, but uh, <laughs> so like, it's such an honor to perform with Andrew with Sonic and Tails. It's so much fun. Yeah, and it's quite a big compliment to get that that, that comment because it's like, oh, it just shows you that our, our, we're doing a very good job. <laughs> yes. That we compared to like the the big official VAs was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, this is a huge compliment. Um, so when, when yeah. Andrew asked me, I was thrilled to be a part of these. <laughs> I could not say no. Yeah, it would think, have been I foolish. Think, I think you're right. I think it's also like, because because obviously my brother here, Tom Ham, he's, he's my younger brother. And we actually had a chemistry of like Sonic and Tails growing up um, where I'd be like, you know, he runs, he ran with me. Um, my favorite color is blue. His favorite color is orange. <laughs> um, oh. So we, we had a lot of that growing up, which I think helps when I perform Sonic with the Sonic and Tails dynamic, because I already have that experience with my actual, my younger brother here. So, um, yeah, I think that's where it helps create that realistic chemistry. And when I write the scripts, I, I do think of him in mind sometimes when I'm writing Tails bits. And, you know, it's the first time he's heard this, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, this is all, uh, it's all new to me. This is, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right, I think of you when I write the scripts. So, <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> but it's you and Sydney that brings it all to life, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got, we got that, yeah. We got that spark that just, yeah, it's, it's too true. Ever yeah. since that first panel we did, that first panel, I was just like. Mm -hmm. My Sonic is really blending well with this Tails. <laughs> yeah, it is it is funny how like different actors, like when you put them in together a room, that's why they do chemistry tests when they cast, is they, they <clears> have <throat> to see if there's that spark. And I'm just so lucky to be paired with Andrew where we, where we can have that spark. And I wonder too, if that having 
uh, us both having younger brothers. Um, I, I don't, I'm the oldest, so I don't have an older brother, but, um, you know, whenever you act, you pull your part of yourself to the table um, when you're performing a character. And I, I think that's a lot of it too, is me being with my brothers. Whenever I'm acting, I'm always thinking about my brothers, how they'd react, how they'd speak. Um, and mm -hmm. both of my brothers are super smart as well. Like one, one's like a hacker and one is an electrical engineer. And so like, oh, wow. um, so it's like pulling those experiences together to the table and then pulling Andrew in where we have this chemistry together is absolutely so much fun. So it's a bit of real life. And then also that spark that Andrew is yeah. talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think the characters have grown through the specials. I think they've got they've come so much more like that. They've Sonic and Tails are family by this point. Like they feel like legit family, and I think we convey that very well. <laughs> yes, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm really proud of how far we've come with these characters together. Yeah, like uh, I definitely agree because it's like you're. Uh, I know I've heard this phrase that like you're only as good as who you are bouncing off of. You know, like That's you have, true. like you also have to have chemistry with the other VA, you know, to build it, to make it more very believable. And, and you two just knock it out of the park um, with your chemistry. Like you guys have this chemistry, you know, just as, you know, just as yourselves. And then you bring it and you amplify it more with Sonic Tales because of, you know, you both have like, <laughs> you both have younger brothers. So you kind of draw from those experiences and being able to do something like that. And you guys do always knock it out of the park and such a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you, Leah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. What Andrew, you thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Boone. I, I didn't mean no, to interrupt. I was just agreeing with Leah. Sorry. Oh, oh no, you're good. No, I can't <laughs> praise Andrew enough. He's always willing to play whatever I throw at him. He just takes it. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> grateful, which is key. Uh, but yeah, Andrew's awesome. I'm very lucky. Ooh, um, Thank you. <laughs> oh, Boone, um, do you want to bring up the next audience member? For sure. Um, let's bring up Trigger VA. Come on up, get up. <laughs> hey. Hey, what's up? Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hello. And Hello. cannot hear you guys. That's that's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. We all have to yell very loudly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I was again. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Is that an echo to everyone's voice? <laughs> hello, oh. hello, hello. My name is Ed. <laughs> okay, let me bring let let me bring back up. I don't know. I think Discord's being weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Discord. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Trigger? Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Oh no, now we can't hear him. I can't oh, hear no. him. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Let's, let's, let's pull a Kevin. What if we put him back down there? Uh, Don't worry, we'll keep trying. <laughs> Turn it off and on again. <laughs> Hello, Trigger. Okay. Sure oh, Hello. The there you go. Hey. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Three times. That's that's a new one for Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! And that, oh, good lord, you you guys keep getting quiet for me. Oh no! <laughs> no. Discord, why stop it? <laughs> <laughs> Discord servers are actually on a roaming truck, yeah, so they're get, they getting further away. <laughs> okay, now I can hear you guys. Like, nice. God, this is ridiculous. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Doing pretty well. Doing awesome. <laughs> How about you? Awesome. Uh, so my question is, it's kind of piggybacking off of uh, Rain Booms uh, with favorite moments, but my question is more, during your time, did you guys have any challenging moments? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> Who wants to go first? <laughs> That's the challenge, isn't it? <laughs> that is, that's the challenge. Yeah, this is a challenge. Moment in challenge. In challenge. <laughs> uh, Andrew, you should go first. Yeah, Andrew. You are Me? the mastermind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you I did this to us. Most, I mean, there's been challenging moments with the performances sometimes where you try to convey a certain emotion with a certain characters. Um, 
but then at the same time, it's, I'm trying to think actually. I'm trying to think what's the most challenging. I mean, being more emotional with Cream was quite challenging. Um, because you know, she's always quite you know, she can get emotional, but not as emotional as she is in this. Um, with the whole crying and feeling you know, like devastated and then Amy down and um. So yeah, I'd say I'd say you know, cream is was quite a challenge in it with the emotions. Um, but I think the biggest challenge for me is probably the editing, um, editing all those like clips together. Um, I stupidly would actually record like <laughs> an hour plus of takes of Sonic lines for each scene sometimes. So I have to go for every single one to try and pick my like favorite Sonic takes, and it's just it's just such a long like procedure um and sometimes i go actually i didn't like that line i'm gonna restart that line again <laughs> <laughs> um so i think for me um it's the editing um mainly also the sound effects you have to fight you have to find the sounds put the right sounds in then you have to mix all the audio make sure it doesn't overshadow the voices overshadow this and that and that's a long long procedure that's understandable yeah who wants to go next? I'm going to choose you, Tom Ham. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess um, when you're recording live, uh, you know, during the, the sequences between the, uh, the drama, uh, it's, it's trying to make sure you don't have any dead air, I suppose. Um, and I think it's just, you're always trying to make sure you have something to say. Uh, so like, I think on what Sonic Special Four, we talked about Sonic Superstars, um, and Andrew, you played it. You had played it by that point, hadn't you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for me, it was like I, I haven't played it. You know, I haven't played it yet. So I was like, how do I keep this conversation going without, you know, I suppose you know, exposing myself that I haven't played it. Uh, I think I admitted I hadn't. So, like, how do I keep this conversation going? Even though I had, I have no involvement with the game. So it's like it was always like redirecting to Andrew, and then like finding the right questions to ask him about the game. Make sure that we ended up having like a more full conversation, I suppose. Um, then what, what else did we talk about in that last in that last one? We spoke about uh, the Sonic Metal cartoons, Sonic, Sonic the Sonic comic. cartoons. But yeah, yeah, trying to draw from like my childhood memories and trying to pick out those sort of distinctive, you know, moments. And again, like, as I, as we've mentioned, Andrew just throws me in the deep end. So like, you know, before the show, before we went live, he was like, right, these are our talk topics. But like on the day, like half an hour before we go live, I've got to go, okay, I need to pull these ideas and try and fill that void. Um, and I, you know, and, I, and hopefully they're okay because I know, I know the Sonic specials, especially because of the drama bits, are so exciting that like the bits in between are probably like, you know, they're not as interesting because they are like just me and Andrew talking. But I like to think they work nicely as like little breaks between the action. Otherwise, it's like drama, 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 and it's all like you know nonstop. But yeah, so I guess just trying to make sure you can keep those conversations interesting is uh is important so yeah that's my that's my answer oh, i didn't realize that the talk topics were you you don't know about them until just before that's really yeah. impressive yeah we yeah, usually yeah, play- exactly. uh, yeah. He, he doesn't tell me anything at all <laughs> he just wow. says can you make a quiz <laughs> and i go okay yes yeah, so i'll make the quiz uh and then and then and then i find out on the day that's impressive. Wow. That that just tells me how good of radio hosts you all are. You just take it on the fly. Yeah, we're, we're kind of used to it with yeah, the uh, yeah. Thursday show. Yeah, and it's yeah, like I said, it's 30, 30 years of knowing him. <laughs> so I that feel helps. like I probably just know. I, I, I yeah, we know how yeah. to pick each other's brains. I suppose. Yeah, been together since since he was born, <laughs> and I, I even I'm the one who named him. Oh, I'm called really? Tom because of Andrew. Yeah. Great choice. After uh, yes. Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. Oh, I was only four years old. And I was like, it's called <laughs> Thomas the Tank. <laughs> oh, cute. Thomas the Tank. 
Adorable. Thomas the Tiny Tank. Adorable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good name. <laughs> yeah. That sounds yeah, like the most day like day. military name you could ever give a train, dude. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just yeah. give him the just give him the American flag and he's good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas the tank. <laughs> uh, how about you, Sydney? What was the most complex thing? Um so with uh being a remote voice actor, um, so I have to do a lot of self-engineering. Poor Andrew. I, <laughs> so sometimes, uh, especially when or, uh, recording screams or yells, impacts, efforts, um, I have to really mess with the audio. And so uh, Andrew's really patient. So when, I, when I'm recording, I have to take into account, like, how do I make it? The audio sound good. So Andrew has a lot to work with when I'm performing, but also be emotionally involved with the script while I'm recording. So there's a lot of um, things to juggle um, when you're on, when you're remote voice acting, especially when you don't have an audio engineer um, doing that for you. Um, so I think that would probably be one of my most challenging things. I would say though, my most challenging line um, was saying uh, imitating the Terminator uh, <laughs> tales. <laughs> we did how a lot of takes on that one, um, w- which was super fun. It was fun to play with the voice and try to figure out how tales would say that such a deep masculine, uh, I don't know, bravado voice. And I'm with my voice as tales at the same time. So it was super fun uh, to try that. Imitating the Terminator is that what you said? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense because, like, Tails is like the most like techie guy there is. So there's gonna be That's a lot true. of technical terms with them. That's true. You're right. <laughs> so trying to imitate Arnold Schwarzenegger was probably the most challenging thing. To <laughs> mix Tails and the Arnold Schwarzenegger and try to make something out of it, and it would turn out to be so much, so much fun. Um, so I had I had fun with that challenge, and Andrew was a big help with that as a director. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's a combination I never thought I would ever hear, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. kind of opposite ends of the spectrum pitch wise, <laughs> but um, but it was super fun. I I, had, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. What about you, mm-hmm. Ghost? I think actually, I think Sydney hit the nail on the head about the fact that because it's even though you're voice acting remotely in the back of your mind, you're still like, oh, I hope the audio is all good. I hope that's all yeah. good. Cause obviously if you're in a studio, that's someone else's problem. But yeah. And cause especially when it's like, when you're a character that goes from like talking quietly to yelling a lot, that up and down, you get very worried about that. But a fun, a fun challenge that can be very fun to yeah, resolve is because it's audio only is, um, if the script says like, oh, hit noises or throwing punches, you are like, okay, there's a lot of different avenues to take here. So I'll just send you just a long collection of just, and that's, it's fun. It's challenging in the sense that you don't know what, which is the right one, but it's also fun to just throw anything at the wall and pray Andrew knows which one to go with. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one that feels that way with self engineering. <laughs> I so like hard. making anime noises. <laughs> <laughs> um, did that answer your question, Trigger? I'd say that more than answered it. Thank you all. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for your question. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Here is my next question. I'm very curious. Do, do you have any favorite bloopers where you messed up a line and it came out funny? Oh. <laughs> oh, man, we do have them, of- but I can't think of one. I'm sure you two must have loads. I, yeah, I definitely do. We did, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, some bloopers I love. I did, Like I said, I did love, you know, Ghost's improv. Um, <laughs> there were definitely so bloopers much- in there. <laughs> There is. He said so much funny stuff, and I was like, I, can't, I don't know what to pick. Um, I think the jo- I think the I- joy of Storm is just that anything, even if it goes wrong, it just sounds like a character thing because he would say it wrong. I know, but the, the 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 beauty of it was you didn't sound like you were like improvising. It sounded like you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. <laughs> you believe my deceptions. I guess all improvised, but you wouldn't think it is. You think he's, he's reading off a script. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I love that stuff. It, uh, there was a lot of funny Sonic bloopers. Some that's also, <laughs> some of them that do contain swear words because it just happens. <laughs> oh, that's a given, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, one of my favorite ones, um, Sydney, you did as tales is when you were doing that thing about the animal being squished in the in the robot form of tails. You're saying it's too dark for radio. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes okay it's vaguely coming back to me right now so I, I if i remember right andrew so we were oh you're gonna have to jog my memory it's coming back to me so wasn't there something like an animal gets in a robot and they get squished and yeah, tails was talking yeah, in, about that yeah well you were in disguise but well, tails was supposed to be in disguise and then obviously the bottom bit breaks off his tails burst out and fangs like and wait a minute, that's Tails, and you're like, saying, no, it's not, I'm the Tailnator, obviously. <laughs> you said, this is just the remnants of the animal squished by my body. <laughs> yeah, and that's right, I was uh, improv that part, and, I, was, and I, yeah. I stopped after I said it in horror. I was like, what did I just say? <laughs> like, Never mind, scratch it, don't use that one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That one makes me laugh so much, especially when, especially when Tails is like, I think that's too dark for radio. <laughs> oh, oh man, you should clip that one though. You should have a blooper reel. I actually have put one together actually, funny enough. You did, stop. I did, yes. Oh. Um, in fact, um, uh, Doom actually has the blooper file. <laughs> oh. No way, really? He does, yeah. I, so I gave her permission to pick whatever she likes from it and just storyboard it for fun, so... The storm stuff is in there. Yes! <laughs> I need to hear this. I have not heard this. <laughs> and I forgot what I said. Even the moment, the moment I finished, I forgot what I said. I was I in a you. trance. I forgot. <laughs> I need this blooper reel now. <laughs> I became Storm. He's real. I think one of my favorite Sonic bloopers is when I start sneezing mid take and I have these out of control sneezes. So you hear me sneezing like a duck, but in Sonic's voice. And um, <laughs> he's actually trying to talk. He's like, hey, <laughs> um, that's one of my favorite ones. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my there's God. a lot of funny stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, Nay said a lot of funny stuff. Um, uh, yeah, everyone was everyone was funny in it. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of bloopers from Doom as Amy. I uh, like oh, she yeah. starts rapping. It was hilarious. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's it's great. Ooh, um, Boone, um, do you have another question for them? Oh, I ran out. Uh. <laughs> But hey. Kevin has his hand raised up. Yeah, let's bring Kevin. up Kevin. <laughs> Get up here, please. Hello. Hi. Hello. Kevin. Hello there. Hello, Kevin. Get on Kenobi. <clears throat> and anyway, <laughs> um, I'm curious, like, if, if you had to do, like, one special, and it could be just about anything or, or, or whatever, what would it be? Like, the one special you've been wanting to do, but you haven't done it yet. Ooh. Oh well, there is one that I've I, I that was originally supposed to be number four. Um, Sydney actually knows this one. Um, <laughs> you've actually read the script, I believe, the original draft of that script. Um, <laughs> it's the reason why it's on pause for now is because it's it's turning into a very epic scale plot. Um, it, it has Surge and Kit in the story. Oh. Um, the Phantom Ruby is involved. She wants to erase Sonic from existence. And yeah, it, it's something I really want to go back to and find a way to make it work. Uh, it's, it's just, it's screaming. Like, how would you put it? It's screaming. It's, it's such a good story there. There's a story sitting right there. Um, I mean, Sydney, you've read the first draft of it. Um, mm. What did you think of it? <laughs> It's gonna be good. I can tell you that. I remember reading through it, and it, it, um, I think something that Andrew does really well. He plays deep into the character. He doesn't pull punches. Um, when when I was reading that script, that was my first impression with it. So, um, without spoiling anything, there's a lot of meat to the script, and it's very very well done. Yeah, and, I, and that's why for now I'm kind of holding it because I don't want to rush it out or. 
just produce it and go, oh no, the, the rest of it was not as good as the beginning. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's something I really, really want to get into. Um, I also, yeah, there's also some other ideas that I have that I would love to do. Um, I, I want to explore a tail special at some yes. point. Uh, oh. that, yeah, I, I want to do a tail special, which also has Cosmo in it. I, it's something I really want to do. So, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, you, you made Boone happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> you made Boone <laughs> Jenny happy. <laughs> so, just for context, Boone is the rebel actor for Cosmo. Uh, if you ever need a Cosmo, he he got you. I'd be happy. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> If their specials ever get made, I'd love to hear it. Oh yeah, I've already, I've actually been brainstorming an idea in my head. So I, I think if if it all comes together nicely, it will happen. The tail special will happen. As a tail fan, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, well thanks for answering charge? my question. <laughs> Ooh, here is my next question: Are there any specific lines that never made it into the final? For any of the um, Sonic Radio specials, well, uh, besides the other improvised stuff from Storm, <laughs> 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 um, there is actually there actually was some lines from Tales and Tangle uh, that was cut. Um, only about like four lines, I think, maybe where, when Tangle starts playing with Tails mm. is uh, Miles Electric. That was recorded, but it was cut due to time restrictions. But I might bring that back. I might bring that bit back. It was a funny little scene. It was originally scripted longer, but it, you know, <laughs> um, I know that was cut. I know there was some Cubot lines that were cut. Um, actually, there was actually a whole scene of Eggman, Orbot, and Cubot that was actually cut from the Eggman scene. Um, I did that because I just felt like it flowed better if you if Sonic and Tails just went straight to Eggman's base and just burst in instead of Sonic and Tails run through go to Eggman going, oh, why is Sonic coming? And then go back to Sonic and Tails. It just didn't have that same uh, flow. So that's why I cut it out. And I think it, it works better with them just jumping in, smashing through. And also it was good for the audience because the audience at that point will think, oh, Eggman's behind it. So, you know, so those 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 bits were cut. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if there anything else. I don't think anything else was cut besides those bits. There probably was some other little bits cut, but as, as my brother says, you know, if, if you don't remember it or think about it, then obviously it's, it was supposed to be cut. <laughs> mm, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you don't miss it, then it, it, it didn't belong. Yeah. It wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I've learned from my brother with editing and stuff, because he's an editor, so uh, mm -hmm. for short films and all sorts of products, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, so when he when he said that to me, I thought he's right, you know, and that's why I've learned going forward with these specials. I like to treat them as like short films. So whoever doesn't get through uh, will either be saved as a deleted scene or will just be cut in general. But actually, actually, wait, there was also a cut scene um, in Sonic Special 3 that was recorded um, that we did, uh, me and Sydney did, with Sonic and Tails go and rescue Eggman mm -hmm. and, uh, from the Titan. So that was literally cut and trimmed. <laughs> Uh, for time restrictions, so instead the time just wax Eggman back home by <laughs> into the into the ring. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, I've been curious, Tom Ham. Um, so, so, since your brother Andrew here doesn't tell you, are there any like in any of the when when it's premiered live um, on the day of for any of the Sonic Radio specials? Were there any like um? story plots that like just surprised you you know because i know andrew actually wants to see your actual genuine reaction yeah uh so yeah with the fourth one uh i keep referring to the fourth one because it's the one i remember the most being the most recent but um of course like the the identity of the villain is a is a mystery um so andrew kept saying like during the song breaks and stuff, he was like, any idea who, who it is? And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it could be Eggman. I don't know. <laughs> and then, like, you know, it ends up being um, spoilers, you know, Metal Sonic. It's like 
ah, you know, so that was a surprise for me. But then, of course, it all made sense because there's all, like, clues in the story to indicate it is him. And, of course, it was, like, uh, the anniversary of uh, Amy Rose, Sonic CD, and Metal Sonic. So it was, like, it should have been obvious, you know, that, of course, it was Metal Sonic. But, um, yeah, so uh, bits like that are always surprising. Um, And, of course, sometimes it's just the gags. Uh, are always um, just incredibly funny. So it's always nice to just uh, be blindsided by a really funny gag. Um, yeah, so there's, uh, yeah, those are some of the surprises I experienced <laughs> live <laughs> uh, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it went on the air. I think, I think it's because the way it's written, you kind of get so immersed with their journey that you don't think of Metal Sonic being behind it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I when I listen to it, when I'm there opposite Andrew in the in the uh, studio, I like to just close my eyes, and I say to her, "Say I'm closing my eyes so I can visualize the story. <laughs> I can visualize <laughs> the character." Um, that's always yeah, it's always good. As they yeah. say, the a radio is the theater of the mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think uh, it would be cool one day, Andrew, if you did it uh, did one live. With, with everyone like the actual drama bits live uh, and Ooh. like the real time real time sound effects as well where you like <gasps> and people shoot each other you like pop the balloons <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like old school ring the yes. door ring the door <laughs> the <laughs> world world with it. an achievement you know that would be pretty exciting that that is I think we could pull that off on <laughs> Revo at some point <laughs> yeah that would be cool Sonic Radio Live uh, oh, here in River. Yeah. That'd be quite cool. And, and sort of do something it. where, like, yeah, but you sort of have a story, but, like, you you sort of have the freedom to take the story in a different direction or, you know. Yeah. I mean, really make it free-flowing and improv-heavy. I think that'd be quite exciting. That That's would be a exciting. Great idea. I mean, <laughs> you could do sound effects on Discord, can't you? I've heard people use soundboards. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I think it's actually plausible. We can have someone do the sound effects for us, and then we just come in and improvise a plot line. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. We can, yeah, Tom, be really... we, can have, we can have you, Tom, be the uh, the narrator of the story. Ooh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, I can be in charge of something. I don't know. Yeah, sounds good. You can be the narrator. So he's still involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be I can voice the character. <laughs> You can voice the character. I, I mean, I mean voice the character. yeah, let's try and get Tom as a cameo character in the next one. That'd be quite cool. Yeah, that would be okay. cool. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> mm, very That's interesting. <laughs> um, here is another question I have for you, Andrew. So when you write the script, like, do you imagine like the voices for the characters when you're actually writing the script? Like when when you write like like a piece of dialogue, you're kind of like, do you imagine the voice of the character saying it? Yes, yes, I do. When I like, for example, when I was writing for writing Fang, I was just thinking about Naze. He was his voice is in my head. That's why I thought I have to contact him. <laughs> I was just like, I have to have to have him do the voice. It's just like I kept visualizing him uh, reading the lines, doing the lines. I think I said that to him as well. I actually said to him, going. I actually wrote this with your voice in, in my mind. And every time I write the Tales bits, I think of Sydney's voice. It's just, it always pops in my head quite often. Just like when I make, that's the opposite of me make sure it's going to work. If I can visualize them saying it in my head, then I go, okay, this is going to work. You know? And then, and then there's some characters where you write, like Storm didn't have a voice yet. So I had to try and think, how would Storm work? And then I asked, you know, Ghost here going, can you do Storm? And he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. And then he sent me his audition clip. And then the, then we went to see the Sonic Orchestra together. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's when I told him, said, I like your storm, your storm now. He's like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good day on both accounts. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, the characters who were casted, I had their voices in my head. Like when I wrote the Amy lines, I was thinking of Doom's voice. I was writing Neo Metal's lines. I was thinking of Adam's voice. Um, and then there's people like the characters like Fang. 
when I wrote him, I remembered Naze's voice. It just came in there, and I thought, he's going to do it. And then this, that's how it went, really. Mm. Because, like, I, I kind of noticed that sometimes when when you just, when you're just around, like, um, VAs, you can just hear the voices <laughs> when you're writing the, when, when you're actually writing um, the character's dialogue. Because I'm pretty sure um, when you wrote for Tangle, you were probably thinking, <laughs> oh yeah yeah when i wrote tango i was like i, I gotta get corin for this and she's just just perfect for the role it's just mm. yeah <laughs> corin is amazing very, yes very amazing <laughs> the, again it's the, the another voice that, I, that to me became definitive like that's tango's voice when i read the comics that's tango's voice <laughs> oh yeah or like when i read surge i'm like oh that yeah i hear Corn or they yeah yeah I, I can't i can't not hear any other voice and i'm just like I, I i it wouldn't have worked without them you know it's just like yeah mm. <laughs> looks like we are um getting close to the two hour mark and oh. and i don't see any more hands raised but I would like to thank you all for tuning in to the Sonic Radio Specials Q&A. And I want to give a very big shout out to Sonic Boone here for being such an amazing co-host. Yeah, thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. And let's give it a round of applause for our panelists here. Andrew HBA <laughs> on Able Able Moon 88. Um, Tom Ham 94 and Tomato Ghost. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You for thank us. you. It's been, been a very good time. Yes, thank you for having us. Yeah. I do want to so say um, I do want to say one thing. Um, the next Sonic special is going to be Knuckles themed. <gasps> oh. Oh. oh no. <laughs> oh no! Yes. And it's going to focus on a storyline with Knuckles. It's going to be exciting. I've already, already started brainstorming it, and um, it's going to have an original score as well. So that's the next big news there. Oh, he's still oh. oh wow! And here's the last piece. <laughs> I am planning to have Josh down here, who's in the audience, to voice a new character. <gasps> Also <laughs> exclusive. Rebel All exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> wow, that's that, that's some very great news to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have the next panel, which will be the cross breaks. Uh, no way. Uh, the Q and A with Emmy, aka Stormy Hearts, which will be co-hosted by Cookie Star and Andrew HBA here. On February 9th at 11 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. ET. So stay tuned for that next panel. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. may, all, may all have a wonderful day. <laughs> thank you for having us. Yes. Yes, thank you for having us. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.